you know, you you mentioned pastors liking big booty boys. Or oh, and I don't even know if you're referring to pastors or just men in general. How what is your thoughts on homosexuality in the church? Well, it must be prevalent. Look at the church. How many of your choir directors, how many of your choir members are homosexuals? And, and, and let me tell you this. The homosexual belongs in the church. Why? If you say that the church is a hospital and you say that the homosexual or the lesbian is sick, then you should be having prepared a prescription Sunday morning when that sick person gets to church. Or if you don't have a prescription, and I'm talking about the word, and I'm not talking about beating a homosexual over his head you shouldn't be with no man. Nine times out of ten, he knows that he doesn't supposed to be there. But what are you giving them as relief, man? Are you are you telling them? Are there any programs in your church or in your ministry or in your word that talks to the homosexual? We want to say that the homosexual is going to hell. But what about the backbiter? What about the fornicator? What about the, the sister that was with the pastor last night or the deacon that ain't her husband? We want to pick out sins, what we call, or I call, the comfortable sins. I think that the homosexual is the church. I don't tell you what your lifestyle's going to be. You gonna be what you going to be. I ain't got no heaven. I ain't got no hell, hell to put you in. Do I know homosexuals? Yes. One of my friends is probably one of the biggest trans women in this country. I've appeared on her television shows, T.S. Madison. I've been at T.S. Madison's home. Her mother has cooked for me in her home. It's not my lifestyle, but I'm not going to come in your house and say, oh, you and someone, you go on to hell. No. If you know the word and you believe in the word, then it's up to you to make your decision, brother. But we got homosexuality in the church, every church. Some of it is closets. Then you got homosexuality in the pulpit. Big old bull looking men that were known to be homosexuals. James Cleveland sung a long time, I don't feel no way sad. Were, fall, were falling out for James Cleveland. They paid to go see James Cleveland, church folk. Well, it was well known that James Cleveland was homosexual. There are homosexual singers now. But I let you have your time with God. The Bible says, work out your own soul. Salvation, brother. I'm not going to condemn you. I'm not going to hate you because you're homosexual. Just like I don't hate you and I know you're screwing on half the women in town. I don't hate you then. If there is no big sin and little sin and you say that homosexuality is a sin, how can I hate you, brother, and not hate the other things that you do? Okay, you mentioned earlier, and I, I should have tackled it then. You said we all, many of us anyway, uh, 
read from the King James version of the Bible. Mm -hmm. James, according to you, was homosexual. Where, where did you even get that from? Research, brother. King James also wrote a book on demiology. Do the research. He just didn't look ahead the King James Version of Scriptures where, where much of Scripture is not there. Do you think that everything is in 66 books? What about the canons? What about the lost books of the Bible? What about the Apocrypha? Do you study the lost books of the Bible? Yes. Okay, so it, most of us don't. What is What are some of uh, uh, the teachings in the lost books that you well, think that is contradictory to what we all know as the 66 books of the Bible. Well, let me let me put it this way. You've read, let's go to Genesis. You remember Cain and Abel, right? Yes. Cain killed Abel, right? Yes. Then the Bible says Cain went to the land of Nod. Remember? Yep. And he married his wife. Right? Correct. Now, in the in the church, we were taught about Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, right? That is correct. So why where does the wife come in? You lost me. What? If the Bible says he went to the land of Nod and married his wife, uh -huh. we were taught about Cain and Abel, Adam and Eve. Where did the wife come in? I don't know. Bring, bring this on home. What is the point you're making? The point is that when you read the lost books of the Bible, you find that when Cain and Abel were born, they both had twin sisters. And Cain married his twin sister. Do the research. See, we, huh? Go on with your book. Go go ahead. I'm I'm listening. Okay. And I don't have that book up in here with me right now. You will also find that baby, one of the books of the lost books is called Infancy. And you find that even as an infant, Jesus was performing miracles. And when I talk about that, I, I, I compare Jesus to the story of Superman. We all know the story of Superman. Before he was Superman, he was Superboy. We all looked at the cartoons. When you look at the story of Superboy, you saw Superboy performing super deeds, right? Correct. Isn't it logical then that little boy Jesus, who was all knowing, all purpose, had his powers, that Jesus had his powers even as a little boy. But when you book, read the book of infancy, you find that this Jesus also performed miracles at that point. 
get you a copy. It's good reading. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.